All right, so Michelle Obama, let me ask the panel this question, was speaking this week and she did invoke racism. Uh, she said, among other things, that uh, she was followed in stores. I imagine you remember that, right? You've had that experience. Yep. She said, uh, we all know the experience of, of going to a party and people assume you're the help. Mm -hmm. Okay, this got the usual suspects very angry. Rush Limbaugh said she was playing the race card. Laura Ingram said a litany of victimization. Um, they act like her very existence is kind of a deliberate provocation, but... I think they wanted her to go down to this, to Tuskegee, right, to this, where these working class Alabama kids, and actually just like give them the okie doke. Right, to say, okay, because Barack and I are in the White House, like, ding dong, racism's dead. That's what they wanted her to say. And the fact is, we don't do that with each other. We don't right. tell that lie, right? We actually tell the true American story of black people in this country, which is one of resilience. And resilience has two parts. It has struggle and it has overcoming. Absolutely. And so often the right wing just doesn't want wants to deny either one of those parts, right? Either black people never struggle or they never overcome. But you have to see, sometimes, I, I'm so naive because on racism, because it used to be, I grew up with like George Wallace and dumb racist that was easy to make fun of, right? But, but now they're like censors, you know, like stupid censors are easy to work with. But real racists today, they don't say it out loud. They're the scariest ones, you know? And, and they're like liberal censors. They're the scariest ones. Were you in Baltimore when the riot happened? Oh yeah, but I, I feel, you know, the night Baltimore was burning, I was filming a cameo in the new Alvin the Chipmunk movie in Atlanta. So I, I may not be that qualified to talk about it, but I, <laughs> I, I, but he's your fan. I, know, but yeah, I you know, was. I mean, look, I was arrested in Baltimore in, in my life, now. and I was in a paddy wagon. They didn't break my back. Yeah. So I guess, you know, but at the same time, there's a cop bar I hang out in, and they're very nice to me. So well, it just depends. But I know, here's how you solve it. Two ways you want to solve it, what I think in Baltimore. Is, is one, like jury duty. Once a year, every family has to move to the exact economic opposite neighborhood and live there. They have to get their hair done there. They have to send their kids to school there. They gotta go to the store there, and then you move back, right? The other one is, don't make it a race thing, make it a class thing. There's just as many poor white people in Baltimore. Poor white people don't riot, rich white people do. You know? So get, yeah, rich, rich white people college riot? kids. You know, yeah, right. I mean, who was, <clears throat> if there oh. were any rioters in Baltimore well, that were white, they were, Upscale, but, but right? When, when but rich Baltimore, white kids riot, they call it celebrating. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, well, did Che Guevara take toilet <laughs> yeah. paper? You yeah. know, I mean, really, I'm, right. I'm for that. Toilet paper is expensive. <laughs> I, I, it's a fortune when you go in and yeah, buy well, those Why did they down. burn down the CVS? Why, well, that's, why, 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 why would you think? Go burn down a he, country he, club. He, yeah, people always say that, well, well, they burned out, they burned down the CVS. They stole stuff they needed. You know, you need yeah. medicine, you need <laughs> socks, you might need a blood pressure regulator. Like, so, but when people say, why do you burn down a CVS? Why, and why are you burning down your own community? Well, because of black people being denied loans, because of black people being snookered out of their homes and gentrifiers coming in or not coming in. Because that's happened, you live in a community you don't own. You're a renter. Yeah. You're just yeah. occupying a space. The police are there. They're occupying you. So when you say burn down my community, what did I burn? Most CVSs do not hire people who work within 10 miles of there because they're afraid of theft or them letting their friends take something. So what did I destroy besides an economic or a, a, a economic eyesore that won't hire me anyway, overcharges me for drugs, and I got to wait till the next morning for my pain. Well, well, wait, wait, like wait, you, wait, wait. I, are we, well, saying, and, are we saying no small store owners got burned out in that, that's Baltimore? Not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there were a litany of black men but there who had T-shirts on standing in front of stores, protecting stores. Yeah, that and that's some, not what the media yeah, showed you. Absolutely. The media went out right, and right. found children. All right, I, and, and found children but, and said, hey, let's show these kids wilding out and make that re the representation of Baltimore. And that was a lie. But they need to get the poor white people to hook up with them, too. I because confirm. there's Sandtown. Have you ever been I to Pigtown? Yes, sir. You know, they uh, team up together. And they did that. In Ferguson. You know. Yeah, All right. they did I, that in Ferguson. I, I